The holy month of Ramadan has commenced and Imam Hussein TV is committed to providing its cherished viewers with a diverse array of high quality educational content and special live broadcasts from the sacred land of Karbala. Among our primary broadcasts from this holy land is the live recitation of Quran directly from the holy shrine of Abu Abdullah Hussein alayhi salam, offering your home a beautiful ambience of spirituality from the holy land of Karbala. In appreciation of the sponsorship for this particular live broadcast, we have curated three exclusive gifts of gratitude for our esteemed donors. The bronze package includes water from the holy grave of Mawla Abu al-Fadl Abbas alayhi salam, the original Torba or Khaki Shifa, and a piece of marble from the holy shrine of Imam al-Hussein alayhi salam. The silver package includes all items in the bronze package along with a piece of carpet from around the holy dariha of Abu al-Fadl Abbas salawatullah alayhi. The golden package comprises all items from the silver package plus a holy flag of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam blessed on the holy dome and dariha of Imam. To reserve your preferred package and sponsor the broadcast of Imam Hussein TV, kindly contact our Karbala office via WhatsApp using the number displayed on your screen. ابوي <تصفيق> 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 لسه غصته بقلبي بعد يومي الله يغفر لي من السرطان والفتح انت يعني يرجع لنا انا وهي يعني يشترينا دوم بالعيد على عيد ومواليد السنه لا غساله لا قيردار كل شيء ما عندي بعد هاي الرطوبه وهاي الطينه كل شيء ما عندي ويوم طحينه ما عندي اليوم 10 طحين ما عندي شهاده الله شهاده هاي محروقه ولا كهرباء عندك سهل بابا اخذت من جواري ما عندي كهرباء ويومي يهدد بي راح يقطعها علينا غساله ما عندي جاب لي واحده تقول غساله طلعت عارضه هات التلفزيون مالكم عارض الحمام ما عندهم يغسلون به ما عندي كل شيء انا حايره بيهم والله العظيم شنو تحاسي شنو تودي له رساله؟ كل شيء بس تريد يجي بس تريد يجي؟ For those of you who are watching whatever you can give you know, whether it's fifty pound, twenty pound, ten pound, five pound, whatever you can give, please give to help people like this, so that they can improve their life standard. They can become more healthy and they can be more motivated to go and you know achieve greater things. Generosity doesn't need an audience; it just needs a heart willing to make a difference in silence. Donate now. السلام عليك يا أبا عبد الله السلام عليك يا ابن رسول الله السلام عليك يا ابن أمير المؤمنين وابن سيد الوصيين May your heart be at ease, O servant of mine. I am your Mawla Al Hussein. I am the stranger of Karbala, and you are a stranger in these moments. Whoever visits my resting place, I visit theirs, and if they were put in hellfire, my intercession would spare. 
Did you not visit me after every salah? Did you not cry for me and wail for me? Did you not call out Labbayka Ya Hussein? You have a right upon me, O oh my servant, and here is where you will take it, so do not be scared. O oh Allah, I beseech you in the name of my mother Fatima and her broken ribs. Let the light of Ziyarat Ashura bring tranquility to the graves of your deceased. By contributing to the Husseini message, a recitation of Ziyarat Ashura will be in the name of your loved ones who have passed on. Let their names be mentioned by the grave of Aba Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam. What final time? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, as-salatu wa salamu ala khair al-anbiya'i wal-mursaleen wa habibi ilahi al-alamin abil qasim al-mustafa Muhammad wa ala ala bayti al-tayyabin al-tahirin al-ma'asumin, distinguished guests, brothers and sisters, dear viewers at home. As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Ramadan kareem and welcome to Morning Barakah Suhoor special exclusively live on Imam Hussain TV3. I'm Ali Fadl, your host for this evening. And with a heavy heart, we introduce the Knights of Imam Ali السلام, the commander of the faithful. A night where our master and leader is on his deathbed awaiting the results of the doctor with his family and loved ones around him and the orphans quietly knocking on his door. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that your hajat, deeds, a'mal are all accepted on these nights of qadr, nights of power, nights of destiny. Our show, as you can imagine, is dedicated to the commander of the faithful and our guest will highlight the merits of his life and the sorrowful nature of the Imam's death. This is what's coming up on today's show. Once again, joining us from Toronto, Canada, is Zakir Asharos Jafar Dala, and we'll begin to analyze the will of Imam Ali. I'll then give my own reflection on some of the narrations attributed to Imam Ali, showing just how great this man was. That's past the hour. And then we end the show with the daily dua Waqafa Sailun. The beseechers are at your door. So the Imam Ali show today for Morning Barakah Suhoor special looks like this. Zakir Ashairo has joined us as well as poetry, reflections and supplications on the 20th of Ramadan. Hi there and welcome to the show. The persecution and trials that befell Imam Ali السلام, after the martyrdom of the Prophet is the biggest tragedy to befall Islam. Imam Ali Rada reports that the Prophet told Imam Ali, O oh Ali, after me you would be persecuted unjustly. Pity on him who chooses to fight you. Fortunate is the one who chooses to fight alongside you. You are the one who would speak in my words and in my tongue after me. Woe upon him who refuses to listen to your words. Fortunate is the one who listens to your words and obeys you. O oh, Ali, after me you are the leader, commander and my heir over this community. One who abandons you shall find that I abandon him on judgment day. Those who adhere to you shall find themselves in my company on judgment day. When the accursed Ibn Muljim had fatally struck Ali ibn Abi Talib on the head, Imam Ali salam told his sons Imam Hassan, and Imam al Hussein, I adjure you to fear God and not to bother about the persecution meted out to you. Do not grieve over what is already lost. Speak the truth. All your deeds should be to the divine reward, should lean towards the divine reward. Be an enemy to an oppressor and a friend to the persecuted. I am making this will to my sons, daughters and members of my family, adjuring all of you to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is only the beginning of the Imam's will to his family and I'm honoured to be joined once again by researcher and international speaker Zakir Shairoz Jafar Dala 
who joins me all the way from Toronto in Canada. Assalamu alaikum, Zakra Shairoz. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm hoping and, that uh, you can hear me, right? I can hear you. Fantastic. Yes, alhamdulillah. And uh, truly, uh, we're blessed to have these airwaves. We're blessed to have uh, channels like Imam Hussain TV uh, where we can um, talk about Mullah Ali and talk about his great legacy and continue to guide those who have been kept away from the truth. Uh, tonight, uh, we want everyone around the world to be aware of the fact that 1400 years ago, history lost an incredible human being, a person who had so much to give, who offered the people to ask him, mm. ask him before they lost him. And yet they were not able to appreciate what he had to offer. And uh, tonight, uh, as we uh, imagine what's happening in the home of Bibi Fatima to Zahra, salam Allah alayha, that these children that Bibi Fatima alayha, salam, had left behind and she had told them, Ya Ali, Ya Ali, you have to keep serving. I know that my death will uh, break your heart and make you, uh, and, and make you want to close yourself off, but don't let my death embitter you. And the world needs you, Ya Ali, and the children need you. Imam Ali salam, was both a father and a mother to those children. Yeah. And tonight, as he lays in bed from that poison sword by the accursed Ibn Muljim, Imam Ali salam, even as he comes, drifts in and out of consciousness, still has advice and amazing words of wisdom for yeah. his family. Imam Ali alayhi salam's uh, entire life was uh, definitely, every word he spoke was a, a, a will. Uh, he was the Quran in Atik, the talking, walking Quran. Yeah. And how blessed the people were when they had him with them, but they didn't, uh, they didn't make the most of it. Yeah. They didn't make the most of it and they lost they are the losers who lost the opportunity to have a great leader like him who would have kept them all united and guided and islam would have been the true islam that would have prevailed absolutely uh, and uh, you know uh, brother ali that as we're um, remembering this sad night just the fact that um even when he was uh injured with that sword and the blood was on his face um he does tell his his sons imam hassan and hussein and all the people who have gathered around that be careful what you do with ibn muljim because mm. they had converged upon him they had found who did it and he said don't tie his hands so tightly be careful look at the fear on his face yeah only ali ibn abi talib salam, could feel have passion, that mercy and compassion, compassion for his yeah for his own killer yeah Allah Zakra, I, I wanted to start our discussion I guess and you've alluded to it um, quite rightly but the aftermath of the terrible act itself what was it what was it like what were Imam al-Hassan doing what were Imam al-Hussein doing what was Imam Ali alayhi salam doing what was his companions doing and what was Ibn Muljim doing straight after the the the, the, the attack on Imam Ali alayhi salam Yes, um, it is said that Imam Hassan and Hussein were not there at okay. the mosque and uh, they had been sent away uh, for some work so that this was the night that Imam Ali alayhi salam would have to lead. Um, this was this was what was written and Imam Ali alayhi salam knew this was happening. In fact, there were days before this moment, this terrible moment that he, that he had seen Ibn Muljim yeah. in the crowd. Ibn Muljim was one of his companions at one point and Imam Ali had told him that you're going to turn against me yep. and um, at that time he had looked at him a few days before and said this is my killer I'm looking at my killer uh, but look at the um, the kindness of Mawla that um, he always gave people that uh, the a time to uh, uh, to right themselves to fix it to 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 guide themselves to uh, open their eyes okay. and i think tonight as we look at his will yeah of course this wasn't a will for his own children only his uh only for hassan hussein and zainab but it was also 
definitely for those who would come after and for you and I, 1400 years ago, his words still remain so true and uh, so relevant. When we see the sectarian violence, when we see the hurt, the, the killing, the cruelty, but as you were asking about what happened that night, absolutely, um, as the people immediately um, saw what had happened to Imam Ali alayhi salam, and it is said that it was hit quite hard because uh, he was raising from that sajda, and when you come up, you come up uh, with force. Yeah. And so that sword meeting his uh, his blessed forehead, it did cut uh, deeply, and uh, it did uh, part that skull in such a way that uh, the brain was showing. And it is quite uh, um, amazing that he lived for three days after that. But that was because Imam Ali alayhi salam still had a lot of life in him. Yeah. So much to give. It was taken too early yeah. from the people. And yes. I, I was going to say, you know, moving, moving into the actual uh, discussion of a will, um, you know, hmm. because you mentioned quite rightly and you know when we think of a, a will we think of a properties money possession um that they leave to to, to, to children was this the case with imam ali alayhi salam no uh imam ali alayhi salam uh, even when uh, there's another letter in nahjul balagha letter 33 which is uh, famously uh, referred to as the will of imam ali alayhi salam mm. the letter of imam ali to his children uh there is nothing, no property mentioned there, nothing at all about worldly things. And truly, uh, I think that has always been an eye opener when I have studied these things, because we uh, always are planning our future, aren't we? And leaving our money to our children, hoping that they'll do good, do good things with it. But if you haven't brought up your children to understand what is right and what is wrong, mm. and if you haven't given them the philosophy of life, then all that money is going to definitely uh, go to waste. It's going to be misused. Uh, inshallah, our children, um, you know, we, we hope that we have guided them. But Imam Ali alayhi salam was telling everyone who was uh, uh, gathered at his door because as soon as this happened and they took him uh, home uh, and Imam Hassan and Hussein then did uh, arrive, they were told about what had happened and they came. Um, and Imam Ali alayhi salam was being carried when he was being carried, there came a point where he stopped everybody. And he said, tell the people to go back. Mm. I don't want Zainab of Kulthum, who have already heard that something has happened, that they would be shocked to see the people. And I don't want them to see me being carried. Yeah. Um, it, it, um, it shows that Imam Ali salam, was so worried about his daughters. And when we look at what happened in Karbala, Ya Ali, um, the things that your daughters had to see and go through, um, that he didn't want his his um, cherished daughters to even for a moment be afraid. And um, so as he, he actually walks those few steps into his home. Mm -hmm. And those of us who have gone to Kufa have seen that simple home. Um, Imam Ali alayhi salam taken from us to the Kufa to his home. There is that long walk there, but he, he comes in, and his children see him they all gather around him and this is a testament to yeah. what he stood for because he never ceased remembering allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there was always dhikr allah and he was praising allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he was accepting him and his decree um even when he left his home that night uh, the home of bibi um um she had told him father you haven't eaten much yeah and he said i i want that when i go to my lord I don't have so much food in my stomach that I'll be questioned about it. If there's anyone in my in my empire, in my kingdom, yeah. in the people that are with me, that there's any hungry person out there that Ali has eaten more than them. Wow. Such a message right there. Mm -hmm. uh, we just saw a video uh, before our program started about giving. Um, this is what Imam Ali alayhi salam stood for. Before Absolutely. But for us, you know, we... Um, we, we, we sing his praises, we cry those tears, and that's absolutely love. 
but to love is to also walk in the footsteps of someone and to carry on their legacy the father of the orphans but you know his um, his will was not about property he was give, he was giving pieces of advice yeah. and directions leading to good pointing to the right he was actually giving and he would he was coming in and out of consciousness and the right. doctors had come and said that the you know and they had had to tie his head together because otherwise wow. it, it was falling apart um, and what is incredible is that the companions did come they did come to the door but imam hassan alayhi salam requested them that please give us time our family uh, is is grieving right now but we know famously that that one companion asbagh who was just not leaving and he was crying and imam ali al islam as he comes in, in and out of his consciousness he says who's crying who cries this way um I, i'm still alive and and imam hassan tells him it's asbagh he, he just wants to see you one more time look at the love of imam ali al islam that he allows him to come in and again Asbagh asks him, the Imam, tell, you know, give me some advice. Imam, Mullah, don't leave me. I think this is our situation right now as yeah. we are counting down these hours till the, the night when we, when we leave Mullah. He leaves us, but he never leaves us, of course. He's always in our hearts, but it feels like it's all alive again once more. And the way the Oma cries shows you that, yes, Mullah is very much with us in history as it as it unfolds we we feel with it this is why we send our heartfelt condolences to our imam of our time imam zamana ajalallahu ta'ala farajahum sharif yeah. and to uh, the holy prophet and to all the imams but especially right now to bibi zainab and um Kulthum and hassan hussein and uh, brother ali one more thing when yeah. imam ali alayhi salam hears crying he hears again some crying and he says who cries this way and it is bibi umul banim he calls her to her him he says why do you cry this way and she says mola you've called all the children oh. and you have given your uh wishes you have taken the hand of hussein and put it in the hand of hassan in the hand of Zainab and into the hand of Hassan. You've taken everybody's hand and put it in the hand of Hassan, leading him, he's the leader. But have you perhaps forgotten Abbas? Allah. And he is crying in a corner, Mola, because he feels that perhaps he's not considered your son. And that's when Imam Ali alayhi salam says, that is not true. Abbas, come to me, because I have not finished and he says, Abbas, I've given everybody's hands to Hassan for he is their guardian. He will take care of them. But Abbas, you, I am putting the hand of Hussein in your hand for you will be his bodyguard and you will take care of him and promise me that you will never leave his side um, from now on until Karbala. No, 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 no. So Imam Ali al -Islam, even as he was breathing his last was very much aware of what was happening around him, yeah. able to hear people crying and ensuring that no one was hurting and that he had not left anything unsaid. Um, he uh, is truly, uh, he's, he's teaching us something here. Yeah, Make sure that there is nothing unsaid in your life. Make sure that your children are, are given that feeling of being a family before you go. Mm. Make sure that everyone in your in your community has only good things to say about you when you're gone and these are his same famous words aren't they that live amongst people in such a way that they seek your company and in such a way that when you pass away they crave for you they they miss you they cry for you yeah so look you mentioned a few times that his injuries were fatal they were quite deep we know that he was fatally injured by by a poisonous sword did Imam Ali alayhi salam say anything about zulm or zulm and, and how to deal with those who commit crimes? Absolutely, he sure did. I mean, it's incredible that Imam Ali alayhi salam um, was, had the wherewithal, right? He was able to, while he was in that state, uh, to be able to also remind people to be merciful and to not do this kind of zulm 
that do not do what has been done to to somebody like me for yeah. example and he even gives them that directive in fact he says that if i live i'm inclined to forgive him this mm. uh, ibn muljim wait till i die by this stroke of him and then if i do die strike a single stroke against him so it's a single stroke you don't do more than he did right just he hit me once you hit him once and do not disfigure his body mm. and he says that i i have heard the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam saying that avoid avoid this mutilation avoid mayhem even with a rabid dog and you know um this was a foreshadowing the imam hussein and what happened to him in karbala and to his companions uh imam ali alayhi salam was saying don't mutilate his body even though he's your enemy hmm. and what they did to imam hussein and the companions and the horses that were went over imam hussein um is is uh, is in direct uh, uh, it's on an opposition to what the imams always taught imam ali alayhi salam was the fourth caliph in history if the muslims in general who didn't maybe accept him as their first imam but they still accepted him as their fourth caliph he these were his last words do not mutilate mm. and yet they did this and um, about uh, about the yeah well the first thing he does say as soon as uh, you know we find as he's writhing in pain and they say that this poison was um, actually taking over his body in such a way that his color was changing this was a cruel brutal hideous crime and it was against a man who, who was the ruler of the muslims and he was a kind good ruler a just ruler mm. um it's just incredible but this is how the world is isn't it and we see that even now that when innocent people are are killed uh and then the first thing imam says uh, i advise you to fear allah if we had the fear of allah brother ali so many things would not happen hey Absolutely. we wouldn't say cruel mean things we wouldn't hurt anybody uh this taqwa that we all aspire to have is about god consciousness fearing allah is fearing his displeasure and then when he's saying don't run after the pleasure of the world this is actually even a reminder to these who had killed him that you did this because the dunya meant so much to you this is what imam hussein also told those evil people that this is this is dunya you're falling for you're falling for shaitan and imam ali alayhi salam says even if it runs after you don't run after the pleasure of this world an incredible thing and he talks about oppression and dhulm he says say the truth and act for allah's reward Absolutely. if we could do everything fi sabilillah if we could just say i do this because it pleases allah because it's the right thing to do my allah has said it's the right thing to do even if it doesn't make sense to me yeah. and he says be an enemy of the zalim the oppressor and a helper of the oppressed Absolutely. right now we're seeing the world every part of the world is hurting yeah. tell me what part there is no oppression and this is why we need our imam to come ajallahu ta'ala farajum sharif but the sixth imam has talked about um you know not helping that he is not a believer imam says who in spite of being capable avoids helping his brother in need this is not just financial but of course it's definitely financial too hmm. but there are so many other ways that we also miss the boat and we miss helping each other um imam gives this this warning that allah also leaves him on his own and does not help him in this world and in the hereafter so um in in, in fact even imam musa qadim salam has famously has said that if a person due to some difficulty takes refuge with his muslim brother right you, somebody comes running to you help me and you avoid him you cut him off you turn away from him you act like you haven't heard imam says instead of you know in spite of being able to you could absolutely have done something mm. something mm. then he has cut himself away from yeah. divine help he has cut himself off he has basically uh, he will be degraded in this world and in the hereafter and we're going to see that and we're seeing it yeah. and allah is the best of planners sakra uh, sharoz you you've personally mentioned some very very wise words and i'm sure that the imam alayhi salam 
he left some wise words for his children and and the ummah did he leave any practical advice on how to live our lives well definitely these are these are philosophical when you look at it but they're they're literally the formula to, for success then Nahjul Balagha is full of this and Imam Ali Al Islam was eloquent even on his deathbed uh, the uh, the words by the way that he spoke are in Nahjul Balagha because mm. the Nahjul Balagha was compiled afterwards with all the eloquent things that he had said and this is one of them uh, but he tells them first of all uh, you know these are the practical advice that he gives that he says don't seek you know don't run after false desires and do not regret for something you've lost you mentioned that in the beginning when you were um, introducing this uh, how many of us spend our entire lives being depressed because we didn't get that person we wanted to marry or we lost that business deal or something just didn't work out we didn't get that opportunity and that this is this is actually amazing psychological advice when you regret you're not going to be able to enjoy your present. Imam is giving us an amazing thing, but also t telling us that when Allah has chosen that you are not going to get that, you should not regret it. You have to be okay with his de decree, not even okay, happy with it. As Imam Ali alayhi salam has famously said, that when I uh, get something, I'm happy. But when I do not get something that I want, I'm even happier because this means Allah, what he wanted happened. Imam also says, uh, speak the truth all the time, work for Allah's blessings. And uh, then he commands his children. He tells them when he's talking about charity, for example, and all that. But, you know, spiritually, he's giving them advice as well. Um, the practical advice, do not forget about the giving up your wealth, yourselves and your tongues for the sake right. of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right. Reminding us that this entire body, all of it, uh, is uh, is even our sacrifices in the Holy Quran? You know, uh, Allah tells us, say that my life and my death and my sacrifices, everything, uh, is for Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. But our tongue, our wealth, Imam saying everything for the sake of Allah. And the practical advice that He gives um, is uh, definitely about how to deal with neighbors and how to deal with uh, fellow family members. And also, he does talk about um, how we should be dealing with um, our fellow Muslims as well. Okay. You know, um, okay. amazing, amazing advice. Uh, I, I think we can't speak enough. Even when we look at that letter thirty-three in the in the um, uh, in Nahjul Balagha, where it's a letter to his sons, Imam Ali alayhi salam gives the most incredible advice and. Uh, uh, you know, one of them is just um, something that really stands out always for me, where he says, do not let others decide the how the how our, how our interaction will go. And do you know what that means? This means sometimes when people attack you, they're immediately on you. They're immediately saying something that gets you triggered. This word lately that we've become very familiar with. Yeah. And we say, well, he triggered me. Nobody gets to trigger us. We have that ultimate control. Imam says, don't let that person decide how that interaction is going to go. You decide that this is the way the interaction is going to go. Absolutely. You're going to do it with love and kindness and mercy. Absolutely. So, Zakala, we're going to take a very, very small break. Inshallah, when we return, we'll be continuing with the merits of Imam Ali, alayhi salam, specifically from the will of Imam Ali. Don't go anywhere, brothers and sisters. Inshallah, we'll see you in a couple of minutes.
since this. Welcome back, dear viewers of Imam Hussein TV3. If you've just joined us, you're watching Morning Barakah Suhoor special, a show dedicated tonight to the commander of the faithful, Ali ibn Abi Talib, Amir al Mu'mineen. On a night like this, on the 20th of Ramadan, Imam Ali Islam is on his deathbed, surrounded by his family members. In those final moments, or what he is to believe is to be the final moments, he is then able to give advice to his family members, his companions, and the whole Muslim Ummah, because he is the, technically he is the ruler of the Islamic Empire. And an assassin, assassination was not just attempted, but completed on the ruler of the time. But in those moments, the words that came out of Imam Ali salam were words of wisdom that we can take into our lives. And I'm joined by Zakir Ashai Rose Jafar Dala, all the way from Toronto, Canada. We appreciate her time, her appreciate her energy, her passion, and her sympathy for the Amir in terms of relaying these words of wisdom from Imam Ali alayhi salam. Zakir, thank you so much once again for joining us. And, uh, you know, in, in terms of the, the, the will, um, we're, we're now talking specifically in regards to his advice for there's a couple of things but if we can focus on advice to family ties you know what mm. was his wisdom what was his advice when it comes to enjoining family times especially in this day and age where a lot of families may be living from different parts of the world it's very difficult to stay in touch even if they do live together there's always discord between them but how did the imam talk about family ties now, a beautiful question because absolutely Imam talks about family ties and uh, uh, that, that practical advice that he gives comes first of all to his children. Uh, an amazing um, uh, inspiration for us who are parents that leave letters of um, of instruction for your children. Uh, years ago, when I read the letter of Imam Ali, uh, and especially this letter uh, that he's th these words that he said on his deathbed, I was inspired. I was uh, in my twenties, and I, in fact, I was pregnant with uh, with my first child. And I wrote a letter to my child, my unborn child, and I said, "I don't know. What if I die before I get to tell you what I want to tell you about the world and what I have learned and what I want you to uh, understand and do and not do?" Because I was inspired by Mula Ali. I wrote a letter, uh, it was actually published in, the, in, a, in a magazine, in fact, the, a letter to my son. I think it's on my website uh, still. But it was all about how I want you to uh, honor a woman and, I, uh, and how no woman should cry is married to you that that you know your home should be a place where you're, where you feel safe these are the kind of things that uh, you know we're worried about writing a will definitely we should write a will we should make sure that our uh, property is uh, you know taken care of after we go however our children don't know what we wanted to say sometimes you know we don't even want to sit with us you know brother ali when i uh, read about hazrat luqman <clears throat> and you know that entire surah of the holy quran dedicated to this uh um, he wasn't. He wasn't. Wasn't even a prophet. However, he was a wise man, and his entire series of advices were, "Ya bunaya, oh my son." I always am amazed when I think about that. This this was a son who was listening to what his father was saying, and he was giving him amazing philosophical advice. If only, um, as right now we're listening to our father and what he left for us. Let's listen to our fathers on earth as well, our, uh, uh, our, our fathers uh, and mothers who have so much wisdom, but we're like, I don't want to hear this right now, right? Absolutely. Uh, Imam says, I, I, com I command you and all my children and family, as well as those uh, who, who read my letter, who, who, who hear my words, he says, that regulate your affairs. Imam is saying, get your affairs in order. Um, God forbid if we had to leave suddenly and so many people die suddenly imam ali alayhi salam says this in the dahj al balaga as well nobody knew they were going to die even those who are told that they're going to die still have hope yes they still are shocked that this is my last breath really i have to leave the world so regulate your affairs our life is a mess um we're afraid about imam zamana jallallahu ta'ala farajum sharif showing up we we call him but we're not ready because we have not we have not reconciled with our own brothers and sisters. Um, this thing about Silat or Rahm, I'm telling you how many cities I travel around the world uh, and every time 
a case is brought to me, mm. what, whatever part of the world I'm in. And I've actually had to visit people's homes to tell them that you live next door to your own brother. This is not Islam. We cannot do qatay rahim. So Imam is saying, maintain your relation with others. And he said this from your grandfather, the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Maintaining relations with others is better than praying and fasting. This is a form of ibadah. Do you know, uh, I recently came across a case of somebody who blocked her father. Wow. Right? Blocked her father. Uh, you know, I was talking to the, the, the siblings and I was saying, this is the biggest insult. Anyone in this era, when you block somebody or unfriend somebody, that's huge. Yeah. This is what people check. Am I still a friend in their friend list? You do that to your own father. Wow. You do that to your own mother so that they can't reach out to you when they are wanting to call you for a, for a glass of water and you don't want to listen to them. You've got your earbuds on. Uh, what if that's their last call that they're calling you yeah. for? And uh, Imam, Imam says um, this about um, family relationships that he says you should communicate with others. You should show modesty. Modesty is so important here. And, you know, even when we're living in the home, the way we dress with our family members, even if somebody is your father or your uncle or your brother, there has to be a decorum. Islam is all about how we present ourselves. Uh, and, and, and there is a haya. There is a haya in how we talk, what we say, what we do. Uh, he says, do not do qatir rahim from your next of kin. Mm. He says, do not leave um Amr bil maruf and nahiyan munkar nahiyan al munkar we have to guide each other but when we close each other off when we block each other when we say who are you to tell me what to do and i've lived longer than you and i know better than you how are we ever going to grow uh, are we waiting for our parents to breathe their last are we waiting for the, us to suddenly hear they've had a heart attack and then suddenly we show up at their funeral Imam Ali is saying the most evil ones amongst you, you know, if you let this happen, that you don't, don't do Amr bil Maruf and Nahyan al Munkar, the most evil ones will lead you. Of course. And then when you pray, your du'as will not be answered. Your hajat right. will be not. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not like those people who do this kind of division and hatred. And then when they see bad things happening, they just shrug and say, it's not my problem. Uh, it reminds me of a hadith of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, where he says that um, uh, it's like being in a, in, a, in a ship and there's a hole in that ship. Yeah. Would you say, well, it's not my problem. It's at the bottom over there. I'm up here. The water is going to enter. And it's going to, at the end of it all, uh, drown all of you. When we all need to, when we see um, such holes in our community, in our friendships, in our relationships, when we see people uh, who are fighting, we have to work uh, and reconcile them. Absolutely. Often we don't want to get involved in people's problems. Eh? Yeah. We were like, you know, that's it. I'm going to be the bad guy. And they're probably going to become friends and they'll leave me because I worked so hard to get them together, but they're going to share notes and we make all this. This is all shaitan. Of course, we need to work uh, on, on keeping people together. And family unity is paramount. Absolutely. Mom, Ali, at the end, just giving the hands of the children in each other's hands uh, is an incredible example right here. Uh, can, do you think the teenagers of today, or even the adult children of today, um, people who come to the mosque, they'll give food to everybody, but not their own sister or their own brother. They've brought things. You come to somebody's home, there's a majlis or a wedding, and their own relatives are missing. Yeah. What are we doing? Zahra, our home should first be full of our relatives. Absolutely. And then after that, if there's any space, we call the outside. I was going to say, look, just in, in the, I'd love to have more time, but I'm just saying in, in, in the last couple of minutes that we have with you, you by the way thank you so much for your real dedication um, and your wisdom uh, throughout this this show very very lastly you know Imam Ali alayhi salam was famous for giving his ring in rukur and for always giving to the poor and especially the orphans very very lastly in, in a couple of sentences Zakara, um, yes. what did he say about charity Oh, he absolutely said this. He said, do not forget about the orphans. Yeah. Uh, he was leaving, if anything, in inheritance. He was leaving all these orphans of the world to us. And uh, by the way, um, orphans are not just those who are 
hungry and starving. But orphans, as the 11th Imam has talked about, he says, when the Imam will not be right there for you to be with, he'll be in uh, in uh, in ghaybat. The ghaybat, he says that those who who preach uh, channels like this, uh, people who 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 preach from the member, who lecture, they are the father of the orphans. The, the Muslims will become orphans be, without their imam of their time where they, they can see. So those who lead, those who teach, imam says, uh, don't forget about the orphans. Do not silence their mouths. Mm. Don't make them become these quiet children who cannot even speak. You be their voice. And he says, do not let them get lost on your watch. Mm. Allahu Akbar. That as long as you are there, you cannot let those orphans be without someone. And uh, when he talks about also I, I, in the last few moments that we have, he talks about neighbors. And that is our uh, people who live around us. Yes, absolutely. Even if they're non-Muslims, neighbors, uh, this is how we teach them about Islam. This is what Sixth Imam said. Bring people to the faith with your actions, not your words. Uh, our neighbors should be very much be able to say these are these these are great people. We we are happy to live beside them. But he says, don't forget about your neighbors. And he keeps saying this. Don't forget your neighbors. He says because the Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said so much about this that uh, you know he said, I have heard them recommend. I have heard the Prophet command. And and his children who are listening said that Imam Ali was stressing about neighbors so much. Now this also is about our community in our global community we are now a whole the whole world has become a neighbor we are just a text away um he said that we you know they, they said that he was stressing so much about neighbors yeah. that we thought that he, he will make us you know that we should inherit each other that we should leave our inheritance to to neighbors yeah. but one more thing brother ali before uh, we sign off he did say something amazing about our spiritual growth and we can't forget about that I love this particular thing Imam Ali salam has said, do not forget about the Quran mm. and don't let anyone be better than you at it. Definitely in our community, we know some people who recite so beautifully and we wish we could recite like them. But when there are other sects who are better at memorizing the Holy Quran, something that we have left, we don't really really focus on this we have got to because he says do not forget about the quran do not forget about the prayer he says it's the pillar of your religion and he says do not forget about the house of your lord don't forget about the holy kaaba and he says don't abandon it as long as you live because if it was abandoned then you wouldn't be blessed today what we're saying with what's happening uh where the holy kaaba is and uh, if we start thinking that you know if we leave it it will be lost and uh you know it will be overpowered by uh, people who don't care about islam so uh we really need to make an effort to visit the holy shrines visit the holy kaaba uh, make make the ziyara as part of the ziyara of medina sure. and as well as going to mecca and uh, we really need to uh, be careful about also loving each other because Inshallah. if we are unified and if we are together, united, then we will be able to uh, love our Imam of our time. Inshallah. Like we loved Imam Ali alayhi salam and we love him and we, 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 our tears come when we remember him. That's how it should be with the Imam of our time. We need to connect with him, prepare for him. And uh, in these nights of decree, especially Brother Ali, when uh, Imam Zamana Jalallahu ta'ala Farajahum Sharif is, is sent our report card, and our decree is written, Inshallah. we better get our act together and better have some good things for uh, us to be reported because the angels are waiting to write. Some Inshallah. very, very, very wise words and advice from uh, Zakir Shadows. Thank you so much for your time. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, mm -hmm. through the blessings of Amir al-Mu'mineen, bless you, your family, your loved ones, um, and inshallah your amal is accepted. Please do not forget us during these momentous nights of the Nights of Qadr yeah. and the Shahad of Amir al-Mu'mineen. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. So coming up uh, after the break, ladies and gentlemen, I will announce that I delve into the merits of Imam Ali salam and a poem related to the loss of our father Amir al-Mu'mineen and the month of Ramadan. Stay tuned. Going back to you. Yep. In a poem written by Nuri Sardari.
He says, you celebrate in the month of fast. We mourn the death of the completed creed. All of you wish to spend Eid with your father whilst we orphans weep for our father on Eid. The rise of Eid's joyous sun makes us weep. All celebrated, our family grieved. Our farewell to God's month had welcomed death. Chained by grief as all from their fast were freed. We'd watch all blossoming roses wither every rose in our house. We'd watch it bleed. Each house in Kufa her joy and laughter whilst our house the cry, Oh Ali, would heed. Every house celebrates breaking their fast whilst we mourn the death of the greatest deed. It's as if their fasting was not enough. And our father's existence they envied. Would this envy stem from that same orphan that in secrecy our father would feed. When our father returned from Kufa's mosque to close their envious eyes, we all we'd plead. Whilst all believe their deeds are accepted, his absence, is orf his orphans have not believed. As every house celebrates such a day, which house wonders which leader will now lead? Can a greater eye witness the new moon? Is there an Ali to succeed? The Ali. The eyes, the eyes that rejoiced on their father's sight on this day upon their father have grieved. Many thanks to the poet Nuri Sardar. Now of the merits of Imam Ali salam, there are many. But Imam Sadiq salam, said, Qanbar, the retainer, adored Ali salam, so much that whenever Imam Ali left his house, Qanbar would follow, would follow him carrying Ali's sword. One night when Imam Ali salam, found Qanbar following him, he asked, Why are you following me? Qanbar replied that he was shielding him. Ali said, Woe upon you. Would you protect me from celestial beings or from the inhabitants of earth? Qanbar replied, From the dwellers of earth. Ali salam, said, Go back, Qanbar. No dweller of earth could harm me without God's permission. Imam Sadiq also narrates that Ali ibn Abi Talib once travelled in the company of a non-believer who asked, Sir, where are you going? Ali salam replied, I am going to Kufa. When the time of parting came, Imam Ali salam continued to accompany that man. Surprised, the man asked, Sir, this road does not lead to Kufa. Ali salam replied, I know that this road does not lead to Kufa, but our beloved Prophet wasallam has taught us the best of manners and stipulated that before parting company, we should proceed a little distance with our fellow traveller as a mark of friendship. The man said, It is no wonder that, this, that, this, that it is on an account of such excellent character that people are embracing your religion. Be my witness, I hereby accept your religion. The Imam returned, or the man actually returned with Imam Ali salam and became a Muslim. Imam Ali salam said that the Prophet wasallam asked him, Oh Ali, what would you do when people would prefer worldly life to the life in the hereafter? When they swallow their pride in one gulp, when they adore and worship wealth under the pretense of piety, when people would practice fraud and cheating, when they circulate the treasury funds as if it were their own personal property. Imam Ali salam replied, I shall choose the way to life in the hereafter in reference to the worldly life. Patiently tolerate all hardships until I join you in heaven by the grace of God. The Prophet replied, True is your word, O Ali. May God help you in your endeavor. In another exchange from the Prophet, it is reported that he said, God has blessed me with five things. God has blessed me with five things and Ali is also blessed with five things. Firstly, God has perfected eloquence in me and perfected wisdom in Ali. Secondly, God bestowed prophethood upon me and conferred vicegerency upon Ali. Thirdly, God gave me the fountain in paradise and to Ali, he gave the Salsabil. Fourthly, he gave me revelation and gave intuition to Ali. Fifthly, I was taken up to the heavens and the doors and curtains of heavens are kept open for Imam Ali Now, before we go, we should mention that
the set was designed and, grace, and, and graciously um, uh, delivered and given to us by Ocean Link. Uh, construct, basically everything you see here, is designed and built by this local company that operates in London. They've got a lot of experience in construction and extension and full renovation. The details are on your screen if you'd like to get in contact with them. Now lastly, usually we end the program with a specific dua from Dua Sabah. However, through this series, we want to end with a specific dua of the day of Ramadan. Today, as we have entered into the 20th day, the dua is, al is as follows. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Allahumma ja'alli fihi ila mardatika dalila wa wala taj'al shaytan fihi alayya sabila. واجعل الجنة منزلا ومقيلا يا قاضي حوائج الطالبين Lord guide me in it to earn your pleasure Do not let Satan find in it his way to me And let paradise be my home and eternal abode O one who fulfills the needs of those who plead we leave you with the dua waqaf as saalun the beseechers have stood at your door please don't forget us in your duas in these holy nights and inshallah we'll see you in the next couple of days on morning baraka suhoor special wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh bismillahir rahmanir rahim Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad Ilahi wa qafan sa'ilun bibabik Wala dhal fuqara'u bijanabik Ilahi waqaf sa'ilun bi babik wala dhal fuqara'u bi janabik wa waqaf safinatul masakin على ساحل بحر جودك وكرمك يرجون الجواز إلى ساحة رحمتك ونعمتك إلهي إن كنت لا ترحم في هذا الشهر الشريف إلا من أخلص لك في صيامه وقيامه فما للمذنب المقصير إذا غرق في بحر ذنوبه وآثامه إلهي إن كنت لا ترحم إلا المطيعين فمن للعاصي وإن كنت لا تقبل إلا من العاملين فمن للمقصرين إلهي ربح الصائم وفاز القائم ونجا المخلص ونحن عبيدك المذنبون فارحمنا برحمتك واعتقنا من النار بعفوك يا كريم 
يا كريم يا كريم يا أرحم الراحمين يا أرحم الراحمين يا أرحم الراحمين وصلى الله على محمد وآل طائرين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين وصل الله على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين الفاتحة مسبوقة بالصلاة على محمد وآل محمد spend he will replace it he is the best of providers no one really has gone through that experience and was able to report back what they felt on a sensory level. The believer will see their place and their position in Jannah, and they will see that what they're leaving behind